Welcome folks, here we are for the series of the 80th anniversary Plymouth Blitz bombing raids. And we're outside one of the entrances, the blocked up entrances, to one of the former air raid shelters, public air raid shelters dotted across the city. Uh, we're in Stoke Village, uh, and there's a number of these dotted around on the Blockhouse Park here, which is originally uh, called Mount Pleasant Redoubt. You can see on the hillside there where the defensive works was. Part of the original dock lines defences, some of the earliest defences in Plymouth, remodelled for World War II with the addition of air raid shelters, barrage balloons and also anti-aircraft gun based up here as well. There's another secondary blocked up entrance here. Time capsules waiting to be open to the public so we can get more tours and people down these things. Unfortunately at the moment we've still not been able to get one open but uh, Stephen Johnson Cyber Heritage has actually documented these when he was given permission in the uh, 90s. But to get one of these over to the public would be absolutely amazing. We've helped a lot of the community groups in Plymouth over the years with um, archival footage, documentation, photographs from inside the shelters. Uh, so hopefully, you know, working all together, we can get one of these open and set many of you down these shelters that every day, if we could get it open to the public, uh, it would be fantastic. It runs all the way along, doesn't it, Paul? All the way along. Uh, Pretty big. A lot of people think it's one shelter, but it's actually three shelters. We've got another blocked up entrance here, and there would have been a series of escape hatches on top it's in the event here, that it took it a bombing raid. So you've got, you That's can it. see the cutting line here, yes. and uh, where the entrance would be. And there would be possibly the cockpit just above it. That's right, yes. So you'd have a stairwell running in today, and then you've got a series of the arched way form passages, which were of the stronger construction. There was two types of construction of shelter. There was the more perfectly formed concrete arch, which was the better of the two. And then there was precast sections, which had to be later retrofitted with steel girders because they were just deemed unsafe. And you've got another entrance in here. So we're up to the, one of the fourth entrances now. You so, can see it by the different type of stonework. That's correct, yes. So this would have been a secondary entrance of one of the three shelters. Now as we come along here, over the, down towards Stoke Village itself, uh, we're going to enter up into the park itself in a moment to see a lovely mural that was painted a few years ago by a local artist in memory of those residents of Stoke during World War II. We've got another infill here, look. Here's, a, here's another entrance, so this would be the far end shelter down towards the... Um, it's very where, obvious, isn't where it? Where the scout took his, yet. Yeah, you can see the line cut in there and we'd have some steps running down into there. And there's the top of it up there. That's right. Reinforced concrete roof. One thing I would say, Paul, it shows these shelters are not very far underground. No, no. Literally a few inches Below ground, you're going to hit concrete, solid concrete roof surface, and uh, and then you've got the yeah, literally the concrete roof of the of the shelter itself. Of course, they did protect people, but some of these sadly took direct hits. Uh, the most prominent and most famous in Plymouth being the Portland Square shelter, which was the loss of 76 lives, sadly. And it wasn't just the only one. There was um, a number of shelters hit Inverdean Road at Peveril. Uh, that's recently got a plaque commemorating those lost. Marlborough Street, Green Street, Charles Cross, some of the shelters around there, they all got struck. Now when you come into the park here, you've got this lovely, lovely mural. It's an amazing. Uh, there's so many beautiful murals popping up around the city at the moment with uh, all the different artists who have the Plymouth Artists Network, brilliant, you know, you're doing amazing work. Uh, this is one that's been done a few years ago uh, by one of the local guys, and it's amazing. You know, it's such a really good mural in dedicated to those residents of Stoke, the ARP wardens, and it's a really good depiction because you can see here, you've got the wardens, you've got the barrage balloon, um, and you can actually see the truck which would winch the barrage balloon up and it's got, got a little bit of history here because it's 
Why is it on the hillside looking as if it's gone down off the pavements? Um, we can't show you the video, the picture live on the video here, but we will post that online because one of the uh, trucks towing the barrage balloons actually broke free. Well, nice no, handbrake gave way and it rolled down the back of the hill. Not on Masterman Road side though, it was rolling down towards the uh, Ford side. And here's the blockhouse. And there's the blockhouse. And there you go, folks. So you can see more. What he's also done is, is included a bit of more than modern housing because obviously you've got the modern housing, a lot of infill. And that's the railway bridge across St. Nevin's Road. It is indeed. The viaduct. So it looks like you've got a bit of a uh, gunboat here, fast patrol boat. Yes. Uh, home guard units. It's all around this. If we go around the back on here, Steve, then we'll show you this. So you've got the ARP warden operating his searchlight. There was a searchlight unit based up here as well. Lovely artwork, the blockhouse. Now, graffiti over the years, people call this graffiti, but this is art. You know, this is the, this is the best form of, uh, for me, it's the, uh, the modern form of art. And uh, I grew up around uh, graffiti myself. I mean, you know, back from where I, we are in Grimsby, where we grew up, we've got one of the legendary graf graffiti artists who's still operating today and does murals all over in, the, in his hometown. Um, so it's a lovely, lovely piece of artwork there. And this was an ARP post, wasn't it, Paul? Yes, this is one of the only ones remaining across the city. So this would have been for the air raid precautions, the warden's post. And from here, they would have operated in the events of raids, the fire watchers, the ARP rescue party. You'd have had pickaxes in there, um, the blackout lanterns, uh, which they could uh, use at night. I've just, I've just seen it, Paul. This end actually blends in the story with the other side. It does indeed. It's a continuous story, isn't it? It is. So we, you walk all around it. And it's a lovely example. There's not many of these warden's posts left around the city. There's this one. There is one in Central Park, but that's not been painted up. Oh, I do believe it's not been painted up. I could be wrong. Um, but it's, it's amazing, you know, and it, and it is a good survivor. Uh, considering as well this area took many direct hits, uh, it's, it is a lucky survivor. So now what we're going to do, folks, we're going to take you up into the blockhouse and uh, we're going to show you what was around here. And also you get these amazing views around the city. When I moved to two, um, Plymouth in 2006, uh, I actually lived in Stoke for four years in Alcester Street. Um, lovely people around Stoke, very, very friendly uh, and was welcomed in. And of course, then history um, brought us together, fate, in 2009. Myself and Stephen Johnson when we met in Devonport Park and then uh, that's really where the Plymouth Blitz project started which has now led to today's book that we're doing, uh, the Plymouth Blitz Legacy and uh, that'll be out in September. So it's really nice to come back here. I've got fond memories of coming up here at night time, doing lots of research um, in, in the open park now, walking the dog and stuff. and. Uh, we found out so much more history that has been, you know, unearthed since that very time when we started it, basically. I mentioned about the barrage balloon truck that's actually broke free. We'll get up to the top of here to give you a better viewpoint. Uh, but it was actually moored literally just to the right of where we're videoing now, where the old um, huts used to be. And the handbrake failed. Now luckily, anybody who knows living up on these, uh, or down in this valley of the Ford Valley here, all the houses in the background there, if that truck could have actually gone all the way, it ended up in somebody's kitchen. But luckily the, uh, the wall at the bottom stopped it going all the way. I think we can see the outline of the area shelter. You can, you can kind of make out the hump there. Um, we have been told that there is another buried command post for the anti-aircraft gun here. It wasn't a fixed anti-aircraft gun, not one of the larger sites, but it was a mobile gun. But there's been no evidence found as yet. Um, we have been told by a couple of residents where the li little football 
goals are that there should be a buried room underneath here but it's never been proven yet that's not to say there isn't now what you've got over here you can see the moat of the uh, Mount Pleasant readout here we're going to walk up onto the top of there and as we go over onto the top of the out outer earthworks there's your moat, that should be a lot deeper, it's been infilled over the years, um, full of historic artefacts more than likely. Um, but that's like I said, that's the original earthworks of the readout. And you can get on top of here. It would be a lot more deep, wouldn't it? A lot more deeper, about roughly about 20 foot deep that moat was, I do believe. So this has become an unofficial refuse tip for Stoke. Over the years. Over the years. So you'll have blitz infill in there as well. Uh, there is a picture of a car dumped in there, so buried somewhere. Um, but it's a great location this, and it's open to the public all, obviously every day, because it is public space. And it's a lovely place to come with family, friends, dog walkers. And the views of Plymouth are phenomenal. And you've got to imagine what it would have been like up here when those bombing raids come in. Because we've got the dockyard just in the background above the trees there. Uh, we can get views of Maker Church over at Rame, Mount Edgecombe, which obviously got hit by the incendiaries and burnt. Uh, you've got the amazing view of Plymouth Sound, so you'd have had all the bombing raids in the Sound coming in. You had fire watches up here, based up here as well, noting all the different fires that were dropping on the city from the incendiaries. Over a quarter of a million incendiaries dropped on the city of Plymouth. And they caused more, probably more devastation, certainly to property, than the actual bombs themselves. Because uh, obviously with many people seeking refuge and shelters, some of them weren't home to actually put out these fires. Here, here you come to the uh, Mount Pleasant Readout information board, lovely information board.